Hello, Carl here with Sustainability Theory News. We're over at MetropolisFarmsUSA.com, and they're talking about how they have the world's first solar-powered indoor, indoor farm in Philadelphia. Now, I haven't heard of too many large-scale solar operations for indoor farming. Of course, small-scale operations exist, you know, hobby-level stuff. But they're talking about 2,000 solar panels on a 100,000-square-foot roof. And they believe they can grow the equivalent of 660 outdoor acres worth of crops in 100,000 square feet. For a comparison, that's just over two acres, an acre's 42,560 square feet, if I remember, or 43,560 about. So that's pretty impressive. So let's go to their technology page. And what's interesting is they don't use LED lights like most indoor farms do. And LED lights are, of course, very energy efficient, but they don't really put out a full light spectrum where you can grow a variety of crops. They're great for uh, lettuces and that sort of thing that don't require a whole lot of light. But when you start getting fruiting crops like tomatoes or peppers, strawberries, or even root crops like potatoes and carrots, they require a lot more light to be productive. So they're using what are called high intensity discharge lights, uh, what looks like metal halide lights around 300 watts. And a hydroponic growing system looks like deep water culture. And you have little shutoff valves to do maintenance around here. The water gets pumped from the bottom of these storage containers up to the root zones and then back down into the storage containers. With deep water culture, you gotta make sure you have a lot of dissolved oxygen, you know, air stones can help you with that. And uh, really a whole lot of it, because otherwise your roots will start to rot. You also can't have the water too warm. So they devised some, what they call proprietary uh, cooling methods. They've done 24 different versions of these indoor farms, so they've done a lot of experimentation. I think if the water reaches over 75 degrees, if I remember correctly, then the plants just can't take up any nutrients. But the above ground, or rather <laughs> the uh, aerial parts of the plant, they require a little bit warmer temperatures to intake CO2 through the respiration cycle. So having different temperatures are very important, and of course you get that in the wild all the time, because uh, the root zone's a different temperature than the leaf zone. Of course there's a lot more information in this page, so I'm going to link to this page in the description if you'd like to read more about it. If you'd like to see more news headlines like this, subscribe to my channel. Have a great day!